today's video, we're going to be covering the bacterial cell wall. And so we need to look at the bacterial cell wall and realize that there are actually two types of cell walls. So the bacterial cell wall can be classified further into two types, and these types are based upon the results of what we call the gram stain. We'll talk about the gram stain in a further video, so if you have some more questions about that, I would encourage you to look up the gram stain video. So the two results that you can get with the gram stain are gram positive and gram negative. So because there are the two different results, we're going to have two different types of cell walls. Make sure that you realize that it's called gram positive and gram negative because of the result of the gram stain and not because of the charge of the cell wall. Both of these cell walls have a net negative charge. So because the cell walls are negatively charged, the dyes that you use in the gram stain are positively charged. And so don't think that positive and negative refers to the charge of the cell wall. Rather, it's because it positively retains the primary stain or it negatively retains the primary stain. That's the reason why. So although it sounds kind of tricky, just make sure that you realize that these cell walls are negatively charged. So the gram-positive cell wall, we're going to have a thick layer of peptidoglycan, or in other words, they're going to be many layers of peptidoglycan. And it has an inner membrane. In addition to the peptidoglycan inner membrane, there are some other things that, such as proteins, but one major thing that you need to realize that is found within the peptidoglycan is what we call tachoic acids. So I just kind of drew them in as like these cylindrical um, shapes within the peptidoglycan, and those are called tachoic acids. So they're just there to help hold things together. We'll talk about the structure of peptidoglycan itself in just a minute after we cover the gram-negative cell wall. So the next one, like I said, the gram-negative cell wall, this one has an outer membrane. followed by a thin layer of peptidoglycan, or in other words, it has few layers. And then there's an inner membrane. Some additional structures that need to realize with the gram-negative bacterial cell wall are that there's a structure in the outer membrane called lipopolysaccharide. So these squiggles that I'm drawing are going to be the lipopolysaccharide. Which is commonly abbreviated as LPS. So these will come into play when we talk about toxins, which is going to be further in the um, semester. So for right now you just need to know the presence of them, but in the future you're going to realize the importance of how it can cause disease in humans. An additional structure that's also found in the outer membrane is what we call porins. So I'm just going to draw these rectangle shapes within the outer membrane and these are going to be the porins. You'll talk about porins more when it comes to methods of control, and I believe in the case study, as long as it doesn't get updated every time, it's going to be addressing porins and how that can also lead to um, antimicrobial resistance. But for right now, you just need to know that porins are something that are found in the gram-negative cell wall. 
So like I mentioned earlier, peptidoglycan is going to have further things and you need to understand the structure of it. So the peptidoglycan gram positive and gram negative are going to be the same structure. It just differs in the amount of layers that there are. So I'm going to kind of just draw this little circle, which is going to be kind of a zoom in onto the peptidoglycan. So breaking down the word peptidoglycan, peptido means protein and glycan means sugar. So there are sugars and proteins that make up this structure. The two sugars that make this up are called NAM and NAG. They're also commonly shortened to M and G sugars. And they are alternating and they're going to just be repetitive. So they're just going to repeat. It's going to go NAM, NAG. And the next one is going to write an M for M sugar and a G for the G sugar. There's not just one layer of the sugars, but rather there's going to be two. And then we're going to talk about what connects these two layers. So the sugars again, NAM, NAG, or M and G, and they're connected through what we call tetrapeptide interbridges. So the reason it's called tetrapeptide interbridges is because tetra means four, peptide is referring to a protein, or in other words, an amino acid, because amino acids are what make up proteins. So tetra, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there are four amino acids coming off the M sugars, and then interbridge is something that's a bridge, so it connects things, and inter means between. So it's connecting the four groups or the two groups of four peptides together. And so that's why you have this line, that's the interbridge portion. So this is the protein aspect of peptidoglycan, so the peptido refers to the tetrapeptide interbridges, while glycan refers to the NAM and NAG sugars. And so this is the concept of peptidoglycan. Again, this could be taken from the gram negative and it'd look exactly the same. The only difference is that I would stack many of these layers for gram positive, while I could keep this as is, or maybe just add one or two more layers for gram negative. So the big differences to make note of are gram positive and gram negative are differing in the amount of peptidoglycan seen, as well as that gram negative have an outer membrane, while gram positive do not. And again, the last note to make sure you remember is that these do not have a different charge, they're both negatively charged, and that positive and negative refer to the result of the gram stain.